Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. Our QuiltCon 2024 video for today is applique. Again, a category that I have not even tried, much, <laughs> much less can actually do. So beautiful work coming from all of the quilters in the applique category. So this is the first place winner in the applique category and the name of it is Big Hug. What Linda says about her quilt is that it kind of took on its own life with these big pieces and they kind of enveloped each other in their big hug and I agree with her and she said she hopes it gives us warmth and comfort and for me it does. It is distinctly modern but it has this kind of that enveloping feel about it. And so I think it's perfectly named and beautiful. And congrats to Linda for her first place win in the applique category. So this is the second place winner in the applique category. It's Christine Fornell. And the name of it is Double Meat, Double Cheese. <laughs> which I think is so evident why it is named that. And she said, after making several small applique blocks, I stitched a small hamburger block and realized what fun it could be to, as a large standalone quilt. Hours of hand applique letter, I switched to machine work and fusing. I hope it gives each viewer joy and a desire to eat. And let me tell you, especially up close, it does. <laughs> so it is beautiful, her quilting is amazing but so much fun so much fun the pickles and the olive on the top and the leaf lettuce and she just did really <laughs> some beautiful and amazing applique work so this is 100 days of greenery by cassandra beaver and this is the third place award winner i find this really interesting she said she had Photographs captured a wide variety of plant life at the local botanical garden, inspired this hand needle turned applique quilt. She used AutoCAD and turned the images into template line drawing. And then she said over the course of 100 days, each section of the line drawing was cut from a separate piece of fabric and the background ombre fabric was revealed during the applique process, creating a stain, stained glass like effect. The gridded quilting is reminiscent of observing the outdoor world through a window screen. And I agree, it looks exactly like we're looking out onto someone's green-filled lanai through the screen. So the plum background, uh, it doesn't look like background. It looks like that was outlined. Looks like all of the pieces are outlined when in reality, that's the background. And each of the leaves is needle turned applique onto the top. So this is What the Hill by Erin Croker from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So she talks about how she was diagnosed with cervical cancer out of the blue. And um, she said, What the Hill is representative of this period where my world turned upside down. This quilt represents the boulders, big and small, that I've navigated every day since that October. It represents the hills that feel hard to climb and the ones that are starting to feel easier. I've learned that physical, emotional, and spiritual healing is not linear. I love this quilt. So this is Patterns 2 by Nancy Lambert. She says, the basic shapes of circles, squares, and rectangles are used to create dynamic grid-like pattern. The pattern has both variation of color and value intensity. Value does the work, color gets the credit, which is what <laughs> One of my viewers, Amy, says all the time, she comments it all the time, and she's so right. So you see the light green going to dark green on its background color, which is light pink going to dark pink. And then here's the reverse. So this time the dark green goes to light green in the background and the d light pink goes to dark pink in the foreground. And so you've got these complementary colors, orange and blue, pink and green, paired together with value intensity and it just makes it really, really compelling and there's a lot of movement in it. The quilting in the center is curved around the round pieces and on a grid for the square pieces. So there's just that extra note of detail in it. 
Oh my goodness. That is the quilting. It is, I mean, it's matchstick on a grid, actually. That is a, that's less than a quarter of an inch grid quilting on this. Plinko was inspired by my love, by my love for mixing order and chaos. It was quilted on a long arm first, then circles were carefully placed in machine applique. All raw bias edges were hidden under the other bias edges. This is Steph Scardall in the applique category, and the title of this is Plinko, which I think that's the name for that game where you drop the ball at the top and it goes ding, 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 and like it hits a nail and goes a different direction. So this is applique. The title of this quilt is Ideas in the Shower by Tia Curtis. And I gotta tell you, I really love this quilt and I like it even more now that I've heard the title. <laughs> the quilting on it is amazing. So it has that suds and water and like, is this shampoo? I don't know. I love it though. It has that kind of amoeba feel, but it really is more like suds in the shower. So I love it. She said, I was thinking of how I can make this easier on myself while I was in the shower and it came to me, why don't I base the pieces with my long arm? So she had the idea for it in the shower. So this is Drift by Linda Branting. And besides the fact that it's really pretty and the rings linked to each other are really beautiful and the tiny, you know, we're a sucker for the tiny quilting. I gotta say, I just love a rainbow. I just love a rainbow. It just makes me happy. Just that celebration of color and just that our understanding of how that comes together and how when one leans into the other, one blends to the other so perfectly. Love it. So this is Frankenstrat by Beth Wells. Portland Museum Quilt Guild put out a call for Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, the exhibit theme being inspired by music. There really wasn't a decision to be made. I had always wanted to make a quilt inspired by Eddie Van Halen's guitar, the Frankenstrat, a cross-pollination of a Gibson and Fender with many intricate details customized to Eddie's taste, including the body painted using gaffer tape. The guitar is housed in the National Museum of American, of American History. She nailed it. One is an exclamation point. Ten is a crowd <laughs> by Natalia Sumner. I enjoy creating applique quilts. The echo quilting showcases the simple shapes and allows them to stand out. There is a sense of movement that the quilting gives to the quilt. I wanted to create a two-color quilt with great contrast and thought blue and green worked well together. While working on the piece, I had several conversations with others about what they saw when they looked at the quilt. I was surprised at how different the answers were. No two people saw the same thing. One person thought guitar, another saw punctuation marks, and yet another saw people. She didn't quilt the body, the person at all. She only quilted around it. And so there's all this rigidity around it and mat-like, and the actual person is actually very soft, and she should be. So this is maternal mort mortality three times higher by Patra Jones from Hermitage, Tennessee. You can see her headband talks about postpartum cardiomyopathy, embolism, poor health care, preeclampsia, hemorrhage, cesarean, and structural racism. So this is Ode to Mary Blair by Corinne Sovey from Round Rock, Texas. She says, I love floral appli applique motifs and design this with minimal color palette that helps each block pop. I have always been a fan of Mary Blair of Small World fame and have named the quilt in her honor.